Here we go, the rest of this week's talking points. We will start with the injunction that has been secured by the Jockey Club, Jockey Club race courses with regards to potential protesters who threaten to undermine the running of the derby on Saturday. Cornelius, this is quite, quite important. Yeah, and this story has developed and developed, hasn't it, since, uh, since entry. And this in, the Jockey Club announced early in the week it was seeking this injunction, which was granted uh, on uh, Friday. And uh, th- this is important uh, uh, in terms of, uh, I think the suggestion is the policing of the events probably not going to change very much. But what is going to change is that if you are... Uh, if you are accused or you do do something, then they won't just pick you up and throw you out of the race course. You will be arrested. And the potential consequences are a criminal record. Uh, and um, I think the suggestion is that quite a lot of people who've got nice jobs but also feel very strongly about these causes might just give it a, a second thought and might uh, go to the peaceful protest that is planned for uh, Epsom as opposed to do any, doing anything more radical. And it's the jockey club clearly flexing its muscles, isn't it? It is demonstrating. It's spending a lot of money doing this as well. It's demonstrating that it, that it is not, it's absolutely not going to have one of its marquee events uh, with uh, millions of people following around the world disrupted. I, I got a, um, a quote here from Nevin Truesdale, the chief executive of the, of the Jockey Club. He said, the court took the view that given the very clear and public threat of disruption and the need to protect the site, the participants, the audience, uh, the injunction release should be granted. This is specifically against an individual, Dan Kidby, and persons unknown, which involves posting the order at various places around the site, including the crossover points on the track. There were no exceptions on the scope of our application. This means that anyone in breach of this injunction is liable to contempt proceedings and a fine or jail. And I think for contempt of court, jail is very much um, uh, a possibility, isn't it? Um, The closest I've come to it is seeing TV dramas where editors of newspapers are brought up before judges accused of contempt, and they uh, very often find themselves in the cells in those circumstances. Yeah, we'll roll straight on here, and Harry, maybe you could pick this one up with the wider challenges facing the derby this year, not just the threat of protesters and animal rising, but also an early start time, which has been forced by the, the, the clash with the FA Cup final. So it'll be taking place at 1.30 on, on ITV. Uh, and that, that's going to pose the race some difficulties unless the sport makes the, makes the most of it over the next few days. It's a, it's a shame that we have had to move for another sport, I think, rather than possibly... I don't know if we were allowed to stand our ground or not. I don't know who was in, in charge of that. But um, I think, you know, the derbies run when the derbies run. That's the marquee race. Everyone will tune in for it. And as long as everyone knows it's one thirty rather than if it's 3, 3.30, then I don't think it'll make too much difference. I think travel plans to Aidan by the time. And I think and racing rail, got, rail strikes is yeah, a rail strike is fairly well. I think racing issue. Uh, has been and had to be realistic about this. It's not just a major football event. It is the cup final. Mm. Uh, and it happens to be a derby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, uh, amazingly, you know. Uh, I hope that I hope they credit the fact that they're calling it the Manchester Derby at uh, Wembley all comes back to Epsom in 1780. Uh, but um, yeah, you had to be realistic about that. It's not going to happen every year. There was a lot of talk on social media. Oh, racing has given in too easy. It's not going to be at 1:30 next mm-hmm. year. Uh, uh, hopefully, anyway, there won't be uh, any, anything else going on. I think realistically, it was the only thing. And if you want the terrestrial TV. Uh, you, you, have, you know, that's what you've got to do. And occasionally you do have to, uh, to, to bend. I think the f- slight feeling is, to pick up um, what Harry said, is that racing is always the one that seems to bend over to, uh, to accommodate others. Uh, and that sometimes becomes a little bit uh, infuriating. Yeah, I, ITV have done quite a neat promo channeling the old world of sport days and just picking into that nostalgia. That was even before Sunday racing, wasn't it? <laughs> the world of sport, yeah, uh, into that sort of the nostalgia that people in, in enjoy. I, I wonder if the sport has has done enough quite to kind of marry the derby and the derby and and make it a, make it a promotional opportunity. Really, see it, see the opportunity. Imagine if Sir Charles Bunbury had won the uh, won the toss of the coin when they named the race. Yeah, We'd the be Manchester having the Manchester Bunbury, Bunbury yeah. at Wembley. Yeah. That'd be fun. Um, Let's it's not talk- quite the same ring to it, does it? <laughs> <laughs> the hill uh, is a, an area of the of the downs that I know the Jockey Club have been very keen to try and get more more vibrant again. Uh, and one of the the aspects of the of the hill entertainment this year is a, a specially designated area um, showcasing the best from the LBGTQIA plus community. Um, this is 
uh, provoked a bit of chunter, I would think, on on social media. Some accusing the the, the jockey club of virtue signalling and the word woke being bandied around in a kind of culture wars context. Um, Harry, do you have a, a view on this or or not? Um, that's the first I heard of it, but I, I don't see the problem with it. I think it's great. I mean, if, if people are involved in LGBTQIA+, are more likely to come racing because they have an area where they at least feel comfortable to start off with and then go racing, work away. I think the, the figures, I'll quote them directly here from the survey that was done, not relating specifically to racing, but to sports venues as a whole. 70% of people believe there are not enough spaces created with LGBTQIA plus community in mind. And uh, 93% of those say that the sports industry should be doing more. Now, whether other sports are doing more, I don't know. But here is racing making a real effort on a marquee day. Uh, and I was a tiny bit taken we, aback by a couple of the quotes. By the, by the the slightly chippy reaction well, to it. Well, Gay Calloway was quoted in the Daily Telegraph as saying, you know, waste of time, put the money into something more worthwhile. Uh, and I think someone else made a slightly sort of t- uh, tokenism type of quote. I, I thought it was, that was a bit odd. Uh, I, I thought, you know, it, it's, it's just organising something to try and make this sport that, my goodness, needs to demonstrate it's in- inclusive. It was a, a good gesture. But also, mm. isn't it also, the hill, they want the hill full. Yeah. Of people. Mm. And if, you know, you go back, we've mentioned it before, but you go back through the old images, the old photos, the old painting, that hill would have been absolutely cel- celebrating... Not many years the, ago. ...every sector yeah. of society. I mean, it, the sort of most diverse group you could possibly imagine. So, to me, this seems to fit absolutely if you're going to yeah. put some really charismatic and upbeat entertainment in there. I mean, that's what the hill's for, I think. Mm. And just a footnote on Animal Rising, I think the meeting between representatives from the Jockey Club and BHA and representatives, uh, uh, including, I think, the guy that you mentioned, Josh, mm. uh, they, ha- they had a meeting over donuts uh, to, 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 uh, to discuss uh, their, their positions. And, A, that was a good, good gesture by the Jockey Club to, to do it. Uh, was it them? Was it that who? I'm not sure exactly who instigated the meeting, but it did take was place. Was it Stuart Williamson? The yeah, new comms and it, it, it took place at a very... Very high level in both organisations, and the, um, the, the, the you know the the, the animal uh, the rising demonstrated. They said we we see your point of view, but we just mm. don't agree with it. So uh, it did show how far apart they were. I do think they've been clever this week insofar as that there's been enough uh, iron fist and just enough velvet glove as well to deal with to deal with the situation. Let's talk about whether Frankie de Tori is going to win the Derby in his farewell year. He rides a rest for John Gosden. I mean, this valedictory tour has been pretty ridiculous already hasn't it Harry? <laughs> well it'll make him reconsider his decision I would imagine ah, but, I uh, no but I mean Racy has a, a funny way of, of being good to Frankie and Frankie's been very good to racing and uh, it would be it would, certainly would be incredible if, if he managed to you know? The interesting thing I was thinking about the whole ITV show on, on Saturday with the cup final and I thought if you got a big enough result or if something happened in the derby that, that actually transcended the, the race just mm. as a... Get them to Wembley for half time. Well, something, not, not maybe, maybe that's unrealistic, but the idea that maybe at some further point during the coverage, you would then get some further insert. You know, you would get, if it was Dottori, you would get more, more play through the show. Could you put the replay on at half time at the derby? Especially if it's Frankie. To replay, I wouldn't see why not. Because you know, yeah. it's only a minute and a half. You know, I think oh. that would, that would that's the sort of thing we need to do. I think a bit more. But but this Valor, uh, you, you mentioned as there's been so much chat. Is he actually going to retire? And there was a there was a very good piece um, by Lewis Porteous in the Racing Post this week uh, saying he hopes that he might reconsider. But I think those who were at the um, the event to to preview the Derby on Epsom Downs on Monday morning when uh, he uh, he rode a rest. Uh, were noticing, he said on numerous occasions, you know, my last, my last derby, my last this, yeah. that, and the other. So, I think it it will be a surprise. Quite where it ends, I think, whether 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 it will end in Santa Anita or Australia or Japan or whatever. I think that uh, is open to a bit more questions. Well, it? does that depend on? I mean, Santa Anita is the obvious endpoint, but if suddenly he he picks up a ride on the favourite for the Melbourne Cup, a race that famously he hasn't won and should have won, of course, on Max Dynamo. That's going to be that, seriously. Well, tempting, that'll come into it? play, and then does he you know, pick up a potential 
Kentucky Derby runner, and that's why he <laughs> what about won. And he, and he, <laughs> yeah, he wins the, go forever. And he wins the Dewhurst Stakes in great yeah, style yeah. on a brilliant yeah. two-year-old. Yeah. I'm just imagining us at the July Festival in about 15 years' yeah. time. 67-year-old yeah. Frankie de Tori <laughs> um, just stopped leaping off the yeah. horse, has, but, ha, yeah. has found himself on the July Cup favourite, a race he's still yet to win. Yeah. Harry Eustace, winning trainer, yeah, said, "There's right. no substitute for experience." <laughs> but and, but but um, in talking about him, his story, and how well it's worked. He goes to Haydock to write something for Aidan O'Brien yesterday, and it wins in good style. And by all accounts, the extra mm. um, buzz about the place because of that was was really striking. And uh, Charlie Hill's horse ran re- equilateral, ran a Rather, terrific race yeah. under him at a huge price yeah. mm. in the pay, Temple. Track, track bias horse. Mm. <laughs> yeah, but even twenty to one was still a huge <laughs> yeah, price. It mm-hmm. was. Uh, Frankie uh, hung around to, to the end as well to ride one in the last for, for Hugo Palmer yesterday, which I thought was uh, was a sign of his uh, current hunger for the uh, for the job. And if Emmett Mullins had a runner in the Melbourne Cup, you'd sure as hell ride that, and who'd bet against it? Uh, he's a bit disappointed, however, with his stable star. No, you wondered where I was going there, didn't you? Yeah, slightly. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't just throw this thing together. Oh, I know. Uh, he is I a bit went disappointed to the... with, his, with his stable star, Noble Yates. Um, who ran in the Grand Steeplechase to mm. Paris last week and ran a rather a moody race, as he and did in the Grand National. Yeah, but, and th- but then he kept on towards mm. the end, didn't he? What, did he finish fifth or sixth in the end? Isn't that him, uh, though, now? Yeah. It just, it just uh, it, it seemed to be particularly exaggerated, that, or uh, particularly striking. You know, he got behind in the Cheltenham Gold Cup, didn't he? And absolutely flew home. Uh, and the Grand National as well. But I think having been the moral winner of the Grand National in some respects with all that weight on his back and running such a marvel- magnificent race, perhaps he was just a bit knackered at the end of um, proceedings. But, but you know, it, it does seem to become, be becoming more pronounced, this getting behind and then staying on again. And I think they are scratching their heads possibly slightly about, about it all. A lot of uh, Irish and mainly Irish trained, but a couple of British trained runners in, in France last weekend as well. Is training jumpers in any way on the agenda? You do, uh, I actually mean. have had a, heard a winner, yeah. Have you? Yeah, I've had, yeah, Shows I had, how much I was paying attention, No, 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 it? no, I don't have Fainham? many. Uh, no. Got no, to do more Huntingdon research. and Southall. Ah. Two hurdles winners. Same, same filly. Same filly. That's a, that's a pinch, she's okay. called. Oh, yeah. um, she's in the paddock. She picked up an injury, unfortunately. Because um, I always used to enjoy your dad's Hurdlers. Yeah, he had a very good chase good called Sonate. Fa- yeah. Sonate, sorry, who who won a Boxing Day meeting at, at Kempton. He was an absolute star, and he he loved it, Dad. Uh, I enjoy it. It's quite attritional, and um, we've had a couple of good flat horses that um, unfortunately we've had to retire through running them over hurdles, and so it's something we'll let braver men than us do, I would mm. imagine. Because it's just it, it's just painful when that. Well, happens, it's just it? as tough on them, yeah. And there was that one really good family of jumpers that your your dad had, all for the same owner. Yeah, sort of Alan Condor and Alan Butterfly exactly. and Harold yeah. Nass. Yeah, yeah, he's still got horses with us. Yeah, he's, oh, he's, he's enthusiasm. Yeah, he's a champion. Yeah. Encapsulated, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything pop up, Cornelius, in the ra- in the end of season ratings? Well, I, I suppose that they had to. No big surprise that um, the Cheltenham Gold Cup winner was the the, the top rated in these um, uh, ratings in terms of chasers. The hurdling was perhaps uh, the more striking because uh, Here's we your are chasers. right. There they're are. the chasers. Galapagos well, on four pounds clearer of an argument. Shishkin. Yeah, I, I think is that all pretty much what we would have uh, expected as far as the chasers were concerned. I mean, the exciting thing there is that you've got a novice in El Fabiolo at one seventy already. Isn't it? Yeah, that's your that's your excitement for next year. And you've got um, you've also got a, ho- a couple of horses uh, that uh, that we know will be back, like a horse in your, like um, Lompresse as well. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I thought he might have been slightly further in front of Inugamain. Was that the judge, first judge impression? Judge on Cup run. Yeah, I'm 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 ha- I'm happy with yeah, that. I'm I guess. Yeah, I'm It's the hurdling. I think the hurdling is the more okay, the more uh, contentious the, issue. Well, uh, you know, there you've got Constitution Hill well clear of State Man, so no big surprise. But about they can't that. get Constitution Hill higher than 175, so they can't push him into the. So realms he is of, he's slightly behind Isterbrack and slightly um, yeah, so he's slightly behind Isterbrack and he's slightly behind. Just trying to think who on night nurse is it? Is night no. Um, uh, well, I'll think of it in a second. Uh, but um, I, I think there was a feeling with Constitution Hill putting in such a 
such a striking performance in the in the champion hurdle and carrying so much before him that he might actually be crowned at the very top, maybe ahead of some of the greats of mm. uh, of recent years. But um, that w- that was not quite to be. Uh, and quite, you know, when it comes to one pound here and one pound there, I never quite. I tell you what. I tell you what. I wanted to ask Harry just Go before on. the tight clock runs out on this completely. Sorry. There's well, no. I think you're <clears> the perfect person to ask this. It, there's this kind of um, orthodoxy that if you ran Constitution Hill on the flat, he could win group races on the flat. Mm. Could he? Uh, I would love them to do it. Uh, I think it, it's. It would be very interesting. I don't know if it translates as straightforwardly as, as everyone thinks. Mm. Um, but, you know, a Donny Cup, something like that, I think, well within his remit. And we don't know what's happening. They've no decisions made as far as hurdling and chasing are concerned so far. Mm. Um, told he hasn't schooled over fences yet, but it could have been done under cover. Yeah, who well, knows? Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> well the, they say the ground just hasn't been right to do it and won't mm. be for a bit. Can I, quick, quick, just before the clock completely goes, the, the Japanese derby took place this morning and there was quite a lot of interest mm. in Seoul Orient. Uh, that, that was beaten narrowly in that race. I think the hope was that he would go 2,000 guineas, uh, win the derby, and then go on for the triple crown. But Tastiera, ridden by Damien Lane, was successful this morning in that race. Bringing you the latest news here on Luck on Sunday, Cornelius Lysett. You've still got another two minutes if you want to talk about... Um, that we, obviously, we talked about field sizes significantly with Richard Wayman at well, the beginning well of the, the show. Well, the, the, the field sizes thing... But it's that, particularly that, summer jumping, and you, you yeah. go summer jumping a lot, I don't. Uh, and so, so today, we've got two races at Utoxida that are matches. We had a two-runner bumper at Foslas yesterday. We've got a three-runner bumper at Kelso today. Now, you know, hopefully, that what, what it strikes me about the summer jumping is that if you put the right races on, you get plenty of runners. But there are too many bumpers getting mm. to very small fields. There are too many slightly better novice hurdles getting quite small fields. But if you put on handicap hurdles, they fill up. It's slightly the Bath syndrome that you were talking about earlier on. You know, they fill up um, very easily. So, you know, hopefully some of the races that uh, the 300 jump races that go will be some of yeah. these type of events that really, you know, the, 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 the two runner bumper at Foss Lass where Sir Mark Prescott had a runner, I uh, hope it's got home by now, uh, um, uh, that goes off at 100 to 1 on and beats its sole rival um, by half of... Sir half Mark, of the, Sir Mark will have been very pleased to have found that race, Harry, won't he? Absolutely. A t- a do you, yeah. do you Willie, think but- Willie Butler was delighted on the heat yeah. yesterday morning, <laughs> was I think he? it was. What, yeah. Was he sent all the way to... No, uh, no, he wasn't sent, but he was just delighted that there was a two-runner race that they were going to win. Yeah. As, um, as you would be, but but but, it's, but, it's, but but clearly, if you're trying to make racing more competitive and more attractive, mm. these type of very small fields are, are, are not really uh, what uh, what you want. I've had some communication from the BHA uh, off the back of our interviews earlier with Richard Wayman and then with George McGrath and Rafe Beckett, and in response to to Rafe's comments about um, about um, Sunday evening fixtures and the pilots. Um, they want to just clarify that the, the Sunday evening floodlit racing absolutely is a pilot. These fixtures will be used to assess the viability of the new product, but there's been no suggestion from the BHA that this is anything other than a six-fixture pilot. I, mean, I think what Rafe was saying was that they were accepting the idea of a pilot now, but what had originally been put on the table was a scheme to incorporate, in race words, many more fixtures than that, up to up to 30. Uh, but the uh, the BHA want to stress that it is nothing other than a six-fixture pilot as things stand. I guess that's the point of a pilot. Those were this week's talking points. Watch live racing now on racingtv.com.